God bless you. It's another day that the Lord has blessed us to see, and we are so thankful to be able to join and connect with you on another Decision Time broadcast. My name is Elder Ernest Dunn, and um, I am delighted to be able to introduce uh, today's messenger, whose name is Elder Corey Davis. And uh, he's going to share with us on today, you know, sometimes we have a hidden agenda. Sometimes we say one thing and do another. But God is trying to get us back on his agenda. You want to hear this message. Elder Corey Davis is up next with God's agenda. Now, how many in here have, um, you work in corporate America or you have a job or you are in meetings sometimes throughout the week? Just raise your hand. Amen. All right. Or you may have meetings in church as well. And in those meetings, there's always an agenda. And, and sometimes the facilitator of the meeting does not do a good job to make sure everyone is staying on the agenda. And so today, God wants to put us back on his agenda. The Holy Ghost is the facilitator. And we are the team members. And so we are going to go through a few agenda items in today's lesson. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Say, and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6 and 6 says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 says, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Now check this out, verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. That leads us to agenda item number one. It's time for my people to come out the closet. And the culture that we live in now, we got all types of groups coming out the closet. LGBT, Black Lives Matter, all of these different things coming out the closet and having a movement. But what about the church? God does not approve of our closet Christianity. Closet Christians like to be Christians when it's comfortable. And even as God was dealing with me, he said, it's time for my church to move from part-time to full-time. And I just was able to watch a little bit of the Oscars. And then the Lord said, you know what? We got a lot of believers winning Oscar awards. And the Oscars are designed to recognize that those individuals who have played a role, excellent. But the role is not really who they are. And he said that some of us have received the When I Got to Preach award. And we get on fire for God when we got to speak for the Lord. But what about when you ain't going to be in front of the people? 
What about the devotion time with your family? Some have received the Sunday morning award. My, 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 my God. We know how to come in here and wear our suits and wear our ties and put on our crosses and wear these collars. But what about Monday through Saturday? Cut your step at 3 o'clock in the morning in your basement. Revelation 3, 14 through 16. And it says, and unto the angel of the church of the Lodosians. These things saith the amen, the faithful and true witness. Beginning of the creation of God. Now God said, I know thy works. And that's for everybody here. The Holy Ghost knows your works. But at times in our lives, we are neither hot nor cold. I would rather that you were cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, say lukewarm. You know, it's nothing like tasting a lukewarm cup of tea. It don't taste good. And because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. And instead of the church allowing the culture to impact us, we need to impact the culture. Stop blaming all of this progressive movement on somebody else. We are letting these things happen. I told myself, and God put me in a rest and said, you know what? You need to be a walking light. Everywhere that you go. And so I have determined in my mind that when the Domino's man come, he know he going to get prayer when he come to 4482. The last time he came, he, I said, sir, do you need prayer? No, I don't need prayer. I said, are you sure you don't need prayer? And he said, please pray for me. We need to be walking lights wherever we go. And you know what? This is something else as, as well. We're going to get to agenda number two. But sometimes you don't need a burning bush moment to just do what's right. Do you have to see a burning bush to do what the Bible says you're supposed to do anyway? The Bible says we lay hands on the sick and what? They shall recover. God is desiring a people that are not ashamed of him. Hallelujah. Romans 1 and 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And even as I was studying and praying, and God says, you know what? Some people have become transformers. And, and we transform when we get into corporate America because, because the culture is coming against us. And God did not call us to transform like that. He wants you to be saved to the bone in church and out of church. And I believe that even now as I speak, with all of my heart, that God is activating a sense of urgency. Say sense of urgency in the body of Christ. And he is endowing us with power by the Holy Ghost with a spirit of boldness. Ephesians 3 and 12 says, in whom we have boldness and access. Say access. With confidence by the faith of him. Our next agenda item, number two, is that we should be moved with compassion. 
Agenda item number two means it says that we should be moved with compassion. What does compassion mean? It says care, a feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow for another who is stricken by misfortune, accompanied by a strong desire to alleviate the suffering. Mark chapter 1, 35 through 41. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. That's what I love about Jesus. He is constantly teaching us about what to do before we move forward in ministry. First things first. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. It's interesting. When you set the example, others will follow. And when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Say cast out devils. But in the morning he was praying. Mm -hmm. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved, say moved, moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. How soon, how soon, how soon, how soon we forget where we used to be. And how God snatched us out of a life that was leading us to hell. He didn't look at the leper with a judgmental spirit. I'm going to say that again. He did not look at the leper with a judgmental spirit. But he had the audacity and the boldness to touch him. Could it be that God has presented you with some problems that you weren't willing to touch? God desires that you be the problem solver. And allow him to give you direction on what to do and what not to do. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is what? Wise. When was the last time we checked in with God and said, Lord, lead me to who I need to talk to today? Not about my next promotion. Not about what happened last night. But about you. That's how we impact the culture. Agenda item number three. John chapter 5, 1 through 13. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, say a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Say, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So all of these folks was laying here waiting for somebody else. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 38 years. And I'm going to park there just for a minute. You may have been going through what you're going through for a long time, but today is your day of deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again. You may have been going through what you're going through for a long time, but today is your day of deliverance. Clap your hands if you believe it. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been there now a long time in that case, he knew it. 
he, he, he knew what he was going through. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. He said, I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said unto him, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Agenda item number three is get to stepping. Get to stepping. It is time for you as a believer to step into the great things of God that he has in store for you. We cannot wait on another man to promote us. Because God is the one that promotes us. Stop trying to do extra favors for your job thinking it's going to get you ahead. Do what they ask you to do and seek God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's time for us to launch out into the deep where only your faith can support you. And the Lord gave me an, an illustration of a rocking chair. And see, the thing about a rocking chair is that when we get in it, we start moving and we're doing a whole bunch of moving. But guess what? We ain't going nowhere. And, and God wants each of us to evaluate our lives and say, what am I doing a lot of movement that's not producing the right results? Say no more status quo. Agenda item number four. is be prepared for the shift. <laughs> yes, God. Be prepared for the shift. Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Genesaret, and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he could thrust out a little from the land. Jesus wanted to preach to the people. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Then after he taught, verse 4, now when he had left speaking, after the word was finished, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. And there it is again. We've done things the way we've done them for a long time. But God is about to shift He's about to shift your approach. And the thing about it is you are one small adjustment away from a breakthrough. And when they had this done, so when they followed the directions that Jesus said, when they went out and launched out into the deep, and when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net broke. Baby, what God got in store for you, you can't even store it all up. You're going to have to give it to somebody. Your cup is truly about to run over. Mm. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Many times we just do what we can do because we are gifted in the natural. But God is about to press us into things that require his super on your natural. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Lord. Could it be, hallelujah, could it be, saints, that your faith has been swimming in the three foot and, and God want to take you to the 12 foot? Woo! My, my, my. 
You about to launch out into the deep with God's help. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Hallelujah. James 5 and 17, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. Woo! And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. By faith. My God. Is there anybody in here that's willing to launch out? Hallelujah. 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 Is there anybody here that's willing to go from the four foot to the ten foot? Or, or you may be at the ten foot and God's asking you, I need you to go to the lake now. Because, because I've seen all your work and I've seen you endure hardness as a good soldier. Hallelujah. But faith don't grow just, just naturally. The Bible says that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And we have got to eliminate this microwave Christianity. It ain't in the Bible. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to launch out into the deep. I see new levels of productivity in my life. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 God. I see it, and I see it in the believers' lives as well. The other shift that he told me about was this, is that, and I know we've been talking about compassion and mercy, and I love that. That's part of God's nature. But we are about to also shift from a season of grace and mercy to judgment into this world. And it's because of the wickedness of the nation. And that's why he said, are you prepared for the shift? Are we going to be ready when people start to flock to the church? Are we going to be ready when people come to us individually and say, why do you even serve this Jesus? Are we prepared for that? Are you going to preach Kojic or are you going to preach Jesus? What are you going to say when they come to you? Bishop said last week, preach Christ. Yeah. Romans 1 and 17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, say from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Agenda number five, and we're going to close. And I want you to really catch this. For the body and for those that are not saved, the Lord says stay saved. We got to stay saved, saints. The Bible says we are not to give room to the devil. And what the Lord revealed to me is a lot of us is giving way too much room for the enemy. We allow him to speak through our televisions and allowing our children to see all manner of foolishness, evil, and wickedness. And we think that's not going to impact them. You know, we tell jokes on our jobs that are ungodly, and we think that we're walking holy. He said, give no room for the devil. 
And then the scripture also says in Thessalonians that we are supposed to stay away from the very appearance of evil. The very appearance. Men, you ain't got no business riding with another woman nowhere. Backseat, trunk, whatever. Y'all can think I'm super deep if you want to. And I know y'all all super saved and everything. But you know what? You have got to flee from those things. And when we begin to do those things, the world says, well, maybe there is a difference. Maybe there is a difference between holy and unholy. Part B of agenda item number five is if you're not saved, get saved. One of the things that the enemy tricked me with was that he, he, he made me even have enough self-confidence when I was out in the world. He said, you know, you can get right before you go to Jesus. He said, you know what, you, you can get all cleaned up. You can stop smoking weed, stop drinking. You can stop smoking sick. You can do all these different things and then go to Jesus. I got news for you. You can't do that. You can't do that. He is the one that will clean you up. And redeem you from the curse of sin. And we all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. But God wants you today. We're standing. So where do we go from here? You've heard the word, but now what do you do about it? We've been reminded, we've been encouraged, we've been motivated to get back on God's agenda. So what will you do? Maybe you need to just have some quiet time with the Lord and reflect on what you've been doing on your own that he hasn't really approved of. I encourage you, whatever you do, get on God's agenda. It will do you good. Well, until next week, we will be back with more word and more power here on the Decision Time broadcast. And in the words of our pastor, remember, you have a miracle in your mouth.